Tarek Skubal or Logan Gilbert? Let's figure that out and recap the weekend next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Monday, June 7th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White and two of the more exciting pitcher performances from the weekend. Tarek Skubal at the White Sox. Five innings, one run, 11 strikeouts. And then Logan Gilbert, prospect for the Seattle Mariners. We've been waiting for this. Five innings, one run, seven strikeouts. Scott, who would you rather have between Skubal and Gilbert? I think Skubal, just because it's been going on longer. You know, they both had kind of a defining start this weekend. 20 swinging strikes, I think each of them had. There's a big number of swinging strikes. Uh, but really for Scoople, it's been it's been a stretch of five starts where he's been good. And, and really the last four, the strikeouts have been way up. 37 strikeouts and 21 innings in the last four. Uh, when Gilbert, it's really just, it's really just a one-off right now. Uh, mostly Gilbert's been relying on two pitches too. Well, Scoople seems to have three working for him, the, the change up the slider and, and of course the fastball. So Scoople's the one I have more confidence in right now. Let's take a look on the hitter side, Scott and Patrick wisdom had a double dong on Sunday. He now has five home runs over his last seven games for the Chicago Cubs. He's batting 412 overall on the season, only 13 games played. Uh, he's 22% rostered where, if anywhere, do we need to add Patrick wisdom right now? Well, seven home runs total in those 13 games. I added them in a couple 15 team, well, really three 15 team leagues. Every 15 team league I'm in, I'm at added Patrick Wisdom. I don't know if it was the wisest decision, but he is getting playing time even with Anthony Rizzo back. They've moved Chris Bryant to the outfield to accommodate Wisdom at third base. Um, now, Jason Hayward just came off the IL, so I, I don't know if that mixes things up again, but certainly they're not going to w- sit wisdom with him still rolling like he is. He has had two 30 homer seasons in the minors, which is not common. You don't see a lot of 30 homer seasons. So the power is legit. Never a high batting average down there. And he's 29 years old. So he wants, it's not like uh, this is some top prospect getting his chance. It's It's kind of a minor league journeyman. But it's been going on long enough that particularly in a year like this one where there's so many hitting needs, I think of those deeper leagues, you, you, you take a chance to see if it continues. It certainly did for Adolis Garcia. Scott, this conversation about spin rates and foreign substances for starting pitchers is only being amplified uh, the past couple of days with some notable starting pitchers' spin rates being down. Garrett Cole we spoke about last week. Trevor Bauer started on Sunday and his fastball was down 223 RPM. Corbin Burns, he had a great start against Arizona. Seven shutout with 13 strikeouts. However, four different pitches lost between 100 and 200 RPM. What do you feel, what are you thinking about this uh, the spin rate conversation right now that we're having about starting pitchers? Well, clearly the, the mandate to enforce um, the use of foreign substances on, on, on balls by pitchers to have a better grip and improve the spin rate Clearly, that's having an effect on on what they're doing. I think there's enough in, in evidence to indicate that. Uh, you know, the fact that Burns still turned in his best start of the season in spite of that drop in RPM. I mean, that's encouraging, and I think I I think we're going to find out that it's not apples to apples the comparison of spin rate to success. Uh, now, certainly spin rate helps, especially on something like the fastball. That's give, that's what gives it that rising action that causes hitters to swing under it. Uh, and I worry about somebody like Bauer in particular. Of the three you mentioned, he had he saw the biggest drop, and he's seen the the biggest fluctuations in performance throughout his career. Um, but I, I think it's just too early to say what granularly this is going to do for specific pitchers. We're going to see RPM down for a lot of pitchers. Uh, I think league-wide, it's going to help offense. But yeah, I'm not ready to say this pitcher's messed up because of it. Yeah, let's wrap up with a prospect here, Scott. And it's been a rough go for prospects the past couple of seasons, but I think that makes sense, the fact that there was no minor league season uh, in 2020. But Royals pitching prospect Jackson Kowar will be called up on Monday, and he's been great in AAA. He's got a sub-1 ERA, a sub-1 whip. He's only 24% rostered on CBS. What do we need to know about Kowar, and where would he rank among Skubal and Logan Gilbert? I would put probably put him last on that list, especially after the start Gilbert just had. And I, I mean, 
the the kind of start Gilbert has gotten off to here at the beginning of his career is, you know, indicative of what we've seen from a lot of prospects getting called up, um, representative of it, I should say, in, in which they've mostly struggled. And even Kawar with his 0.85 ERA at AAA, you know, I'm not super confident he's going to deliver great results right away just because that would be going against the trend we've seen of late. He does have a great changeup. He he, it, he is a strikeout pitcher, unlike you know the Chris Bubiches and the Brady Singers we've seen the Royals call up recently. Uh, and and I take a flyer on him basically in any league where he's available. Jackson Kawar, I just would keep my expectations low because you know, again, lately we haven't seen these prospects get called up and deliver big results right away. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. (laughs) 